Do you get overwhelmed when it comes to cleaning? Not really know where to start or what products to use? Well, it is a fast paced, quickly changing world that we live in and it can be overwhelming. I am a professional cleaner, I own my own cleaning business and I clean my own house and I get overwhelmed. Seasons Cleanings is here to change that. I am Shanna Von Kay, your cleaning lady, and we are here to answer all of our cleaning questions. On today's episode, I am going to be talking about what to expect when hiring a cleaning company. I'm gonna break down the whole entire process I am the owner of Another One Bites the Dust, which is a local cleaning business. So I will refer to that on what we do to give examples, but there is just so many different types of cleaning companies and cleaners out there. So I am gonna break that down for you today. Cleaning is what I do, business is my game. Mindset is my focus. If you can't laugh, we can't hang. If I could make my mark on this world, it would be to inspire others to live their best life by me living my best life. I have a heart like a hotel, room for them all. Sometimes I fly and sometimes I fall. I am Shenna Von Kay and I'm here to make your day. So let's have the bud. Let's get it started right now. There are many different types of cleaners out there and different types of services out there. And they are all different. Because at the end of the day, we are all individual and they are people businesses. So you're gonna get all sorts of different types. So I think the key to finding a cleaning company is to be looking for a match that makes sense for you. And how to know what makes sense for you is to ask yourself a few questions. You need to ask yourself what type of clean that you are looking for. There are different types of levels of clean and there are different niches and there are also all sorts of different just dynamics. You've got prices to go with and you how, how often you would like cleaning. So you really need to think through what you would actually like to help you with your cleaning needs. Everyone is so different and there's just different households with families and kids and ages that you have to be very specific to what you want so that when you go looking for a cleaner, you can find someone that matches what is important to you. So I would say prioritizing things like um, maybe you would, for instance, like someone to come in and do the deep cleaning because you can keep up with after dinner cleaning or just you know here and there throughout the day or maybe you are very uh, keen on keeping your floors clean, but you need someone to come in and maybe do the blinds and do the baseboards and maybe clean the oven and hit those areas that just don't see a lot of cleaning and maybe you just don't enjoy them. So if you're not enjoying them or they're not something that you wanna do, you could pass those along. So I think you do kind of need to just determine what you're looking for. If you're like, I don't really need a deep cleaner, we do that every once in a while, but I want someone to come in and help me keep up with stuff. In the cleaning industry, you've heard the term maid service and cleaning service. And the difference in those is actually really important, but they get kind of used for both a lot of the time but a maid service is more for picking up. They are there to maybe help with bedding and laundry, dishes and toys, organizing and tidying, and also the cleaning as well. Whereas you have a cleaner or cleaning company, which is what we do, and that is more of the deep clean. So we're scrubbing, we're hitting the ba bathrooms, baseboards, floors, toilets. We're not doing the pickup, we're not doing dishes, we're not doing that stuff. What we're doing is we're coming in and we're hitting the house, top to bottom, all the way around each room, getting all of the cleaning. I hope that that makes sense between the two of them because if you are looking for someone to help you upkeep some of the chores around the house, then a maid service might be more up your alley. If you feel like you're really good at kind of keeping up with a lot of the daily chores, but you just can't keep up with the cleaning, which most of the time people love to delegate the cleaning. It's just not that fun. Although we do have a video coming out very shortly on having fun while cleaning that gives you so many ways to make cleaning fun, but that's not today's episode, so I'm not gonna get sidetracked with that. 
So I just talked a little bit about different types of clean, different levels of cleaning, and maybe you want really high quality, get in there deep cleaning. Maybe you are just like, you know, I don't really care too much. I just want things to get hit to keep it at bay. So that is something that you'll need to decide before even getting onto the journey of hiring a cleaner. Another thing is to decide how often you're looking to have help. So for instance, we do bi-weekly and monthly cleans. There's a lot of services out there that will do weekly. So I'm sure there might be a few that do daily, but bi-weekly and monthly is probably the most popular reoccurring. And then there's also the one-time cleans where it's somebody just wants us to come in and do a, a once-over or they want us to do a clean between moves or something like that as well. But we're gonna talk a little bit about hiring a service or the one-time clean. Now, when we actually start with our clients, we do bi-weekly and we do monthly, but when we start on any of those cleans, we do the first time clean, which we call the makeover clean, and that's where we hit it top to bottom. But I'm gonna get into that just a tad bit down on the video so I can keep you in what we're trying to figure out, which is what you want, not some of the offers that you can do or some um, things that you'll run into when you start doing services. So determining if you need just help with the, the deep cleaning stuff and you can do the daily grind in it, then maybe monthly might be more toward yours. Or maybe you have a very high traffic house, lots of children, animals, pets, and you would like it done on a weekly to bi-weekly basis in order just to keep up. So that is something that you wanna keep in mind and also your budget will play a factor in both of those as well. Speaking of budget, price is completely all over. Unfortunately, I really can't tell you what everyone's prices are, but I can give you a little bit of a breakdown on what I've seen. So in the cleaning industry, you have a couple different types. You have square footage, you have hourly, and then you have a flat price. So each cleaning company can be different. They can do all of them. They can do one or two, or they just strictly do one. My example for Another One Bites the Dust is we actually do hourly on our one-time cleans and our first-time cleans. But for any regular scheduled client, we do a flat price. A question I was asked today is, is it cheaper to clean it yourself? Well, it is. It absolutely is. Unless you consider your time. And then you can decide what is your time worth. Can your time be better spent somewhere else? Is your time better spent on your business or better spent at work or with your family or on a hobby? So yes, cleaning yourself will save you money. You don't have to pay for someone to do it, but you have to put other factors into play with that. How much time do you have and can you send time? Do you want to try to save time or is money an important factor for you? And one thing I like to just kind of point out is that it depends on who you're going with. So if you've got an individual cleaner, maybe it's somebody who's just cleaning houses on the side, they are definitely gonna most likely be on the um, more affordable side versus a company who is gotta be more on the expensive side. And you wonder, oh, why is that? Well, one thing is they are hiring employees and so they have to pay their employees and pay for um, other things like that. But another one is like, if you have an individual cleaner versus a company, a lot of times, and not all for either side of these, but typically a business is more covered. They have insurances covering things and they have workers comp, things like that, that are an expense that goes into it, which is nice because it's a safety feature. I don't know if safety feature is the word I want to use, but it, it is nice to know that because you aren't know if something happens while them or any of their um, team members are in your house that you are covered if there's an accident. If you call up a neighbor and they're just cleaning for, you know, just cleaning to make extra money, if something happens inside your house, then that can actually be more on you. So that, that is, can, can be why there's a price difference there, the experience versus non-experience versus experience. So these can be why things jump. You also have quality and then, you know, some cleaners are very fast, they're in and out, and so they can make it, keep their prices really inexpensive. And other ones are high quality, where they have the um, certifications, they've gone and got training, they have experience. So that is why the prices change so much. So I don't think it matters um, if you have a budget and, and you know, you want to stick in your budget and what makes sense for you. But one thing that's really nice about it is like um, you can factor in how, how 
what your priorities are, including the price. So if you keep those in mind, maybe you're like, yeah, I really don't want someone who is, and a lot of cleaners who clean on their own do have insurances and things like that, which is one of my ask questions. You want to ask anyone that you're hiring if they are covered with insurance. Um, you want to, um, I, I have those questions. We'll get into those a little bit later, but you do want to ask questions like that. That is what can factor in the price. Also supplies and things like that can also factor in supplies, but we'll get into that a little bit later as well. So kind of know your budget and know your priorities. If you are in, um, and here are some of the, the priorities that you can choose from. Certain priorities that might be for you is if um, they are quick, if they are fast and efficient, maybe you want someone that's in and out of your house. Maybe you want um, just one person in and you're out of your house and that can factor. You want the same person in and out. Maybe you want to make sure that the company or the person that you're working with is really trustworthy. You really want to make sure that someone is the correct person going into your home. Maybe it's likability. You want to enjoy the relationship that you will build when you're cleaning alongside someone being home or in their home. Um, possibly it is the money that is a factor. Maybe you don't have a lot of money to spend, but you really want to just get some help versus you have the money to spend, but, and uh, you have the money to spend, actually it really doesn't matter if you have the money to spend or not. Possibly if you really care about the quality of work. So those are usually the higher end ones because they don't miss anything. And that is really important because um, you're, not all cleaners hit everything. So you have to kind of decide what is important to you, what is your priorities. And it's actually really important in your own home to know your areas and your priorities in your home. So when a cleaner comes through and they're like, maybe for instance, you're like, do you guys take out the trash? And they're like, oh, we don't do that. Well, maybe that was a priority on your list. So you want to kind of really get a concept of what you would like done. So just sit down, think it through, think, what do I, what, what would I like to pass off for the uh, cleaners to do that I don't want to do myself? And a lot of times these can be the things that you hate to clean. Like why, if you, if you love to vacuum, then maybe you leave that for yourself. Although it'd be really weird to clean a house and not end in the vacuuming. It would just look dirty, but that's beside the point. You just need to decide what is important to you, where, uh, where the areas that you would like. And then that way, when you go looking for a cleaner, you can find one that makes sense and is a match and they hit all of the things that are important to you. So you're like, ah, these are the ones that we would like to do business with. So if you can't really figure out how often, when, or what, what I should do, you're like, I don't know what I want. I'm not really sure. Well, if you don't know, ask a pro. A lot of times if you do a walkthrough or if we do a walkthrough and someone's like, I'm not sure, how often should I? We will usually with our experience be able to see, you know, the traffic of your house, um, how often you like it clean, what your level is, what your priorities are. And we might be able to help you be like, you know, I think you would benefit great just by doing once a month. I don't think bi-weekly will be, you know, that important to you or other ones we might see that they have a need for more cleaning. So if you don't know, ask a pro. There are also niches in the industry that are different from a cleaner and maid service, which I explained earlier, but those are things like, for instance, for another one bites the dust, we are deep detailed cleaning service. So we do residential and we do office. We do a lot of in-between moves and things like that. But then you get different services as well that is like, for instance, windows. Windows is a whole different ballpark. Now we can do a window or two and we'll do glass here and there and we'll do the door walking in and out of the house and on request, you know, um, with communicating with houses, certain windows we will hit. But it makes so much more sense to hire a window company. They'll most likely be cheaper. They're more efficient. They get in, they get out, they get the inside, they get the outside. They know what they're dealing with. They deal with storm windows. So windows is a great um, industry that you wanna go to a different one if, you, if you're trying to get a house cleaner. Some might do it, but you can just ask. And then um, you have carpet and upholstery, you've got like dry cleaning, you have air duct cleaning, so all exterior cleaning on the outside of the house. And a lot of these typical cleaning companies will not do um, if they're a house cleaner or maid service. So you do wanna ask, cause you never know, they might actually do it. And you'd be like, oh, you do that and windows? I would like to throw in windows seasonally. So those are something to keep in mind, but do remember um, most of the time, and maybe this will change in the future, but when a cleaner comes and walks in, you're walking around and there are some things that make more sense to pass off, painting can be one of them. First off, I would ask your friends and your family. 
is the people that you love and that you trust. So go ahead and ask them. And if you know any friends and family members who have a cleaning company, I would start there. Cause then you can just ask them, hey, you have a cleaning company or you have a cleaner who comes over, uh, would you recommend them? And most likely if they're using the service, they would. And if they are close to ending a relationship, they'll give you a heads up. So that's nice too. Online is where I think we go a lot of the time to find people. So what I would recommend online is if you go to Facebook, a lot of times you'll put a referral out there. Now I have seen this happen multiple times, so I just kind of want to put this idea in your head, but a lot of times people will refer people that they know. They're like, oh, I know her, she does cleaning, so they'll tag you in it, but they really don't know if they're a great cleaner or you know, if they're showing up to their jobs, if they're doing a good job, if, they're, um, if they have insurance, if they're fully ready to rock. So make sure that when you're going through the references, you're kind of seen for that like raving review with experience where someone's like, I use them and I love them. Or they're like, oh, um, we have a friend who works with them and they just talk so highly about them. So you want to kind of wean out the ones that are excited about the fact that they know them, which is amazing. And you never know who you will find and they might refer you somebody that is amazing that they've never used. But just keep that in mind when you're doing the reviews to really like check it over and look for like, not just a name, but a little bit of a, you know, a information with their name, a little bit of a review. That's the word I'm looking for. I think it is also really fun to explore on all of the social medias and you could go to like Instagram and you can type in, you know, cleaner in your area and then try to find someone on Instagram or Facebook or whatever social media outlet that you're on that they might be on because then you get to see the passion in the business. And if someone's on there and they're showing videos of them cleaning and you're seeing like befores and afters, they're probably really into what they do and they are probably, not always, but very excited to help you out with your cleaning needs. So I think that's a great place to start. And I'm on Instagram and I see and am friends with Instagram from all over, I mean, Australia, everywhere. And it is really cool to see passionate um, cleaners out there who I'm learning from and they're learning from me. So I think if you try to do a little bit of like that research, maybe even go to a Facebook page and check out the review and stuff. And just like anything, if you go to Facebook and you see someone's recommended, recommended someone, you can always go to their page and kind of check them out as well and see like, is this somebody that I think I would get along with, that I would enjoy, are they professional? So that is a good place to kind of use your social media to your advantage. And you might see a project or something that they do and be like, oh, yes, I want that. So when you check out business reviews or websites, you do want to see that it's, you know, reviews are really helpful. A lot of times if people are really upset with something, they're gonna go on there more than they would if things are great and really just let you know what happened. So read the reviews, make sure that, in, you know, if you see a lot of red flags or a lot of really unhappy customers, probably not the company that you wanna go with. But if you have another company that has brilliant reviews and not a single, single mistake, even then you might wanna check it because that could actually mean that they are you know, typing them all in themselves and things like that. So you want a good balance of the boat most, but you definitely wanna stay away from bad reviews. Another really great one would be to uh, get onto a neighborhood site. So if you've got uh, like next door neighbor or you have a app or a way that maybe the whole neighborhood communicates and a lot of subdivisions do this, that's a great place to ask who has a house cleaner in my neighborhood and would you recommend them? Because this is actually, this is actually a really good idea. I probably should start with this one because this is, this one, they're already in your neighborhood. So you know that they're, they're available to come out to that area. And then you also know that a few of the neighbors will recommend somebody that they've been having clean their house for years. So I definitely recommend hitting up those neighbors and asking them who's cleaning their house and can you send them their number? Now that's a wrap on this first part. We have a second part and we will be bringing that out to you in a couple of weeks. But for now, here's a video to just leave you with some cleaning. Today I have a video that is less than two minutes and it's three tools that will help you detail clean your house and you probably already have them in your home. First up, we have a toothbrush. 
toothbrush are great for getting into the areas that are too small for a big brush to get to. So they're great for any crevices and creases and cracks and spots like that. I love them. They are my go-to in my caddy. I always have them on hand. And usually what I typically do is after we have used our toothbrushes and they need to be either tossed out or cleaned, I usually toss them out because I give them, throw them through the wash and then they go into my tools for cleaning. The toothbrush is a great cleaning device, so do not overlook it. Next, we have a toothpick. So I use them to get into very tiny little corners, um, like corners of drawers when you clean out your drawers that there's a little spot where you can't get them. It loosens things up and so I love a toothpick. It's more of a loosen up, it doesn't really grab stuff, but I love having a toothpick on hand. And lastly, the third item is a cotton swab or a Q-tip. A Q-tip is great because not only can it clean certain places, but it also removes. So it's really great at catching things in small spaces. So there's three tools that you probably already have in your house. And if you don't, they're really inexpensive and easy to have on hand. And with that said, I will also say that the best thing to do is if you are in a cleaning business and you clean houses or you're gonna go clean someone's house for a friend or a family member, the best way to keep them is I keep them in a little plastic bag in my caddy. And then that way I have them, they stay protected in the bag and I use them when I need them and trust me. In a lot of houses I do need them, especially when it's a month of like light switches or something like that. So you've got your why and what you would like and now I've sent you to where you can go start looking for them and get the word out that you are looking for a cleaning company. So we will see you next time and we are going to jump into questions that you need to ask them, what to expect, and what the day looks like when they actually arrive to your house to get it cleaned. So thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time. Find a good house cleaner or company I thought that was off. Real fast. That's my team. I just got him. For us, this video. I think we'll both appreciate this. I said both like it's one person watching. Okay. Um, how are we doing on time? I know I keep cutting, but. Oh, wow. This might be a two part video then. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope this helps. I hope it makes you think, oh my gosh, I know what to grab for next time. And subscribe if we vibed, and like if you learned. Down there. Thank you so much for watching.